Hey everybody, it's Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Welcome to a new playthrough video. Today I am playing a game of 2D6 Dungeon. Uh, I am heading to level three. My hero, Jerpa, has made it down to level three. I've got the level three monster cards out here. And uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see what happens. I've not made it this far in the game yet. All right. So as always, I'll be starting by rolling the size of the entry room. Green is x uh, is the x horizontal. Y is the vertical with respect to this map. Uh, it's gonna be a large room. Okay, five by six. So I'm going to just uh, I'm gonna go in with the doorway. Five, one, two, three, four five and it will go up six one two three four five six what i do is i frame in the size of the room like this and then i roll for exits uh three corresponds to one exit let's uh let's go with this way i'm gonna i'm gonna have it go to the left and we'll fill in the rest of this and now I get to use a new table. Uh, the level tables for three and four, <laughs> they're gonna be different. So uh, when I turn to this page, well, here we go. Uh, the level three rooms, this is not a large room, it's not a small room, it's just a standard room. We are entering the crypt. That's the name for level three. Level one was called the entry, level two was called the domain. This one is called the crypt. So it's page 55, so I have a new page to try to remember. Level three rooms, and by the way, it carries over to the second page. Um, I'm not sure why they did that, but that's okay. I'll just try to remember. Let's go ahead and see what kind of room this is. It is a 6-3. Six, 6-3 three. Six, three is on page 56. And 6-3 corresponds to a slab store. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to number this. Oh, no, this is the entry room. What am I talking about? Uh, the entry room, <coughs> excuse me, the entry room always has three exits. Never mind. Uh, it's the only room that has nothing in it by design. Uh, it also has three exits. So I do need to, uh, you know, sometimes you just play so many games, the rules just sort of get ahead of you and you forget. All right. So this is the entry room, big room with three exits and they are art they are archways so this is the entry and this is uh i don't even need to number this room all right i as i was going to go this way let's go this way and see what happens the room i'm going to re-roll that anytime the, the dice is cockeyed so it is a three by one so one two three and one up like that and let's see where it goes a four by four room okay I'm gonna put it up against the wall here uh, like that let's see how many exits four is two exits so I'll put one going this way and one going up now right now I am not gonna search that wall for the secret exit back up to the surface. Mainly because if I do it too early, I may have to come all the way back down into the lower. So it's just a, it's a wall that I can circle back to to check to see, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I might be able to get to a room that's higher up and find a chute, chute to the surface. All right, so this will be room number one. Let's roll and see what it is. So it is going to be a three slash four, we're on page 54, or 55, 50, 55. All right, a three slash four is wrecked space. So, so number one is a wrecked space. I try to get in a habit of always writing down the number I rolled so I can find it faster when I need to go back and re three, uh, reference it. Three stone tombs have been smashed to pieces. Chunks litter the floor. So there's three tombs here. And it says, you stumble through the room. Make a precision check, PC62, or lose 2 HP. Then roll on the IAUT2. 
All right, so um, the way the precision rolls work, and I've got to get my cheat sheet out here. I'm trying to remember. The precision rolls, let's see, where are they? Eh, it's not here. Let me go to the rule book. The precision rolls are interesting. I cannot, you have to roll precision checks, page 21. Okay, precision checks. There will be times when you need to make a precision check. Uh, you will roll, all right, for example, the text may read, okay, you roll an eight on 2D6. So you roll 2D6, you must roll over the number, has a number that you must roll over, not equal to, and a number in brackets indicating how many rolls before the task becomes impossible. Um, so I have to roll, let me go back to the room again, 55, and it was 3-4. So it is a PC-6, two chances, or lose two HP. Make a precision, you get two, ch two chances at it. I think that's how that, I think that's how that works. The two means uh, you can, for example, press out, you, you roll in adventures plus one precision, for a total of nine. They okay, so my precision right now, since I'm level two, yeah, I'm level two, I think my precision is plus one. It is plus one. So I get to roll 2d6 and I have to roll higher than six and I get plus one. So I have to roll higher than five. I rolled a six, so I do make it and I don't suffer the penalty. Then it says I have to roll on IAUT2. IAUT2 is on page 50. I-A-U-T-2, and it had no modifier, so you roll 2d6, that is a 3-1, 3-1 is, you push through a screen of cobwebs and stumble across a basin full of murky water. It doesn't look safe to drink, but it could be used for potion bombs or cleaning of blood. So I'm just going to make a note that there is, there is water here, water source. And that is all I can really do here. All right, uh, let's keep going. Now, it said random for the door. So what I will do is I have to roll to see what type of doors these are. And the way you do that is you look on here, level two exit entry is on page 49. So it's right here uh, for, for level three, roll 2d6. That is a six one, which is metal doors. Metal doors are solid in color. And then you have to roll to see if they are locked or unlocked. And really what you want here is a one to three. Uh, yeah, a one. All right, I will take that. No unlocked doors. All right, let's go through, let's go through the north one and see what's up there. That is a five, a three by five, okay. Uh, staying here, I'm gonna put three, one, two, three, by five. One, two, three, four, five. How many exits? Uh, four is two exits, so I'm gonna put another one going north and another one going east, like that. And let's see what this room is about. Go to page 55 and roll 2d6. I rolled a 4-1, which is on the next page, Three uh, Human Ancestry, Crypt. 4-1 uh, four, four is Jade Hall. This is going to be room number two. Jade Hall. 4-1, okay. It says, four creamy jade pillars support this dark and... and dusty space. So there's four pillars in here. And it says, as soon as you step in, a zombie looms from the shadows and attacks. So there is a zombie. And then I roll on IAUT2 if I survive. They are, the doors are archways, so they are open. And it is unique. It is a unique room. All right. Zombie. I don't know if that's a level one, two, or three. It is not a level three. That's good. It's a level two monster. I don't even know if, if level ones are going to show up in level three, but we'll see. All right. I am going to put a picture of the zombie card up on screen so you can follow along. The zombie has 12 
health and it has 38 XP, which isn't great. One shift. It, it blocks on secondary ones, twos, and sixes. Now the way I do this, in case you haven't watched any of my other videos, is I use dice to remind me. Reds are secondary, greens are primary. So it has no primary blocks, and it will do minus one damage if, it, if I roll any of those as my secondary. All right, let's go ahead and attack first. Uh, I have two atta attacks, Chop, which is a 3-3, three, three, and a Weighted Charge, which is a 1-2, and I have two Shift, and the zombie has one. I rolled a 3-2. With two, I can knock that down to a 1-2. Now, unfortunately, I should have made it a 3-3, three, three, uh, maybe, because uh, he doesn't block on threes. But because it's only minus one, I'm going to do d6 plus two damage instead of d6 plus three. So let's go ahead and roll the damage. He does block on the two. Uh, d6 is, uh, that's um, two plus three is five, minus one is four damage. So four damage on the zombie. And now the zombie attacks with one shift. Uh, that is a six one. With one shift, he cannot change that into what he needs, uh, which is a 4-3, so he misses. We are on turn number two, round number two. I rolled a 1-2, which is an exact roll. I love those. Because not only do you get to roll your damage, you get to add your shift. So it's D6 plus 3. I get to add plus 2, so it's D6 plus 5. And the zombie blocks on 2s, so I'm going to do D6 plus 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that zombie has 2 health left. But the zombie comes at me and rolls a 6, 2. Which again, with 1 shift, it cannot change that to a 4, 3. So we are now at uh, turn number 3. My turn. A 4, 6. With 2 shift, I can't change that into anything. So I miss. The zombie swings at me again and it rolls a 5-3. With one shift, it can turn that into a 4-3. Uh, the zombie does D6 plus 2. Uh, I do not block on uh, secondary 3s, but I do block on primary 4s. And primary 4s is minus 2 damage. So the zombie is going to do just D6. And it does 4 damage, so I'm down to 14. And now we're up to turn number four, and we all get one bonus uh, shift. I rolled a three, five. I will convert that to a three, three with my two shifts. I have one left over. It is D6 minus one. However, he does not block on three. So it's just D6 minus one. As long as I can roll a three or higher, it dies. I rolled a six, and the zombie goes down. <laughs> All right, I get plus 38 XP, and the zombie does apparently carry something, BST1. I have no idea what that is. Let's look. BST1 is Body Search 1 on page 20, and there is no modifier to it, so I just roll 2D6s, and I add, it's this chart right here, add tw uh, nothing to it. Ooh, an 11. You pat down the body and find a pouch. Inside is two... D6 plus 40 silver. Okay, hold on. That is 6 plus four, 46 silver. And 46 plus 30 gold. Four, wow, that's a lot. All right, 46 plus 30. 10, 11, 14 plus 30 is 44 gold. Nice. All right, and then I have to roll on IAUT2 which again is the interrupt, which is on page 50. And a lot of times these aren't good things, these interrupts. They're like surprises in the dungeon. All right, so interrupt table two, roll two dice. That is a one six, which is, there is an old stone urn here that has been pushed over and smashed against the floor. Roll a d6. On a one, d, on a one to four, a giant rat jumps and attacks. If you survive, roll on URL1. On a five to six, you find nothing. All right. One to four is a rat. 
a six, so nothing. So that is it, a zombie, and that's it. 38 plus 658 is uh, 696. So the XP is getting up there. When I hit 1,000 is when I go to level three. I'm hoping to do that on level three, but we'll see. 696, so 700 almost. All right, that is the end of that. Uh, these are archways, so I can choose. I'm gonna go inward this way. So let's see what we find. That is a four, five. A four, five is actually, yeah, hold on. Uh, uh, sorry, it's the room size. Sorry, four by five. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, five this, and it's uh, it's four this way. One, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. So not a, not a good size room there. How many exits? Uh, five is two. So we'll put one going north. Check out the new RPG and Wargame newsletter. Each week, the Tabletop Engineer shares news, products, Kickstarters, and much more related to the gaming hobby. It's free to subscribe, so check out the link in the video description below to sign up. And we'll put one going east. Okay, now we see what the room is. Um, it is a four, uh, one four, excuse me. A one four on the crypt is a water shrine. This is room number three, water shrine. Uh, one, four. Okay, let me read it to you. There is a basin with a decorative spout shaped like a god. Roll on GOT1. It is full of water. All right. GOT1 is up here somewhere. GOT1 is on the tables one. GOT. Come on, where are you? I remember seeing it. GOT1. Here it is, page 15. All right, roll a d6. Two, Intuneric. So it is a, a shrine to Intuneric. Let me, I can never remember what these guys want for their, their donations. So let's see, Intuneric, I'll throw his card up on the screen. Intuneric likes ink, coal, black beetles, ebony, black feathers, and garnets. And I have none of that. So I cannot make a, an offering. So, uh, you can make an offering uh, if applied correctly. Okay, so it says the exits are random, which I already rolled two. Is this a unique room? It is a unique room. So I have to roll to see what type of exits these are. And exits are on the very first page, which is, roll 2d6. <laughs> four, four. 4-4 four, four is wooden doors. I like wooden doors. But are they locked? 2 is unlocked. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to put a little U here for unlocked. And hmm, let's go through the north. Let's go that uh No, let's go this way. Let's go east. All right, so what type of room is beyond that door? A 6-5. Six this way, five this way. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a dungeon full of big rooms. So I've had some with really small and some with good sized ones. So this is good. All right, how many exits? Ooh, no exits. All right. No exits. What is this room? It is a four, two. This is room number four. Uh, and I roll, oh, I rolled a four, two. So let's see what that is. Four, two is an ancient effigy. Four, two. A long time ago in this plain room, somebody erected a grisly effigy to the god Maduva. Man, Maduva. Now, I don't think I have, I think maybe I can make an offering to her. 
Bone, ash, leather, emerald, wishbone, teeth, fangs. No, I cannot. And there's probably nothing in this room. Nothing. Uh, so, uh, it is unique, as all shrine rooms are, but unfortunately, it is a dead end for me. All right, so, let's backtrack. I'm going to go all the way back to this door right here, right there, and near the entry. Let's go through it. It is a corridor, five by one. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, and up one. All right, let's see where it goes. I'm gonna re-roll that. Oops. <laughs> a one, a one, two is, uh, goes up two more. Where does it lead? Five, three, okay. Five this way, one, two, three, four, five by three. All right, how many exits? Ooh, three exits, all right. So really can only be two. I got one going north, and I've got one going this way. And let's see what this room is. This is gonna be room number five. And it is, it is a five, three. You've got to be kidding me. Uh, have I rolled a five, three already? No, this dungeon is full of shrine. It's a stone altar. <laughs> it's another shrine. Come on. Five, three. In the center is a large stone altar. On it is an old candlestick with a dried pool of blood. It is dedicated to a god. Roll on GOT1. All right, let's roll on GOT1. Uh, roll a D6. That is a three, which is Maduva. Another one to Maduva, who I can't off offer anything to. And a five, three. All right, wooden doors, and it is unique, of course. This is a weird room. It's wood doors. So let's see, are they locked? Five is reinforced doors are locked, so they are not locked. I'll put a U and a U. And I tell you what, I wanna go through this door and just see where it leads, because there's gotta be a room in here, because there's three things leading to it. So I'm gonna go through that door and we hit a four by six. All right, well, it won't fit, but that's 24, 24 square inches. So what I'll do is I will go three by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. And this, if there's any exits, they're gonna have to lead to this room. How many exits? Five, which is two. So that's excellent for me. Uh, that means these two exits meet up, and there's an exit right there. All right, so we can seal this room off. This is room number six. Let's see what this room is. A four five, which is family tomb. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Family tomb. Uh, four, five. Let me read it to you. Family tomb, four, five. Where are you? This chamber is lined with alcoves in, what, in which appear to be urns with family names. If you search them, roll on URL1, but then roll a D6. On a one to three, a patrol turns up. Roll on L3P for the patrol. So if you search, roll on U, and it's archways. So there's no archways. So they, they're, it's a dead end. I mean, it's, I can get anywhere I want. All right, so uh, I will search them. URL1. URL1 is Urn Loot, page 32. Do I really want to search these? Eh, probably do. It's an urn, Urn Loot 1, which is this table right here. Roll 2d6. Let me re-roll that. Let me re-roll that. Come on. Uh, five, oh, nine, excuse me. In amongst the burnt bones are some Elios petals. I can always use those, Elios petals. 
uh, and dancoma, dancoma stems. I'll have to look those up real quick. Now, I have to go back and roll to see if I encounter a patrol. So this was a four or five. Roll a D6 on a one to three. Okay. Ooh, a patrol shows up. T roll on L3P. L3P. L3P is level three patrol, page 52. A level three patrol. Roll on a D6. It's right here. That is a three, which is the vanished. I have no idea. Let's look it up. The vanished. Um, that is a, okay, hold on. Um, the vanished. Where is the vanished? It must be level two then. The vanished. It's a level two. I'll put the card up on the screen. The level two is 12, 12 health. I think my pencil's out of, let's see, come on. Just one second, sorry about that. Okay, uh, 12 health, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. The Vanished has one shift and it blocks on secondary fours and sixes. And it also has a, a mask which blocks on primary ones. So my weighted charge is gonna be uh, actually green for one. And it has two different types of attacks. All right, I have four minutes left. Can I defeat this guy? We'll try. I'm gonna prom I'm gonna try to defeat this guy. Uh, we'll see. He gets one shift. All right, I will attack. I rolled a four, six. I cannot do anything with two shift to make that into a thing, so I miss. This is turn number one. He swings and rolls a one, two. With one shift, he cannot do anything. Round two. A 4-4. Four, four. With two shifts, I can convert that to a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, he does not block on secondary threes or primary threes, and that is a D6 minus one. Three minus one is two damage. His turn. 4-3. Uh, uh, he cannot, with one shift, he cannot make that a 2-3, so he misses. We are on turn number three. Four, two. Uh, with two shift, I can make that a three. I could do a three, three again. Lower this by one and raise that one by one. So he does not block again on that. So it's D6 minus one. Six minus one is five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, he attacks. 3-2, which with one shift, he cannot do anything. Yay. 4, we all get one bonus shift. I rolled a 1-2, which is an exact, which is good. But remember, he blocks on primary ones, which is minus one damage. However, I get to add my shift, which is 3. So it's D6 plus 3 plus 3, so it's 2D6. Minus one is D6 plus five. So D6 plus five. I rolled a one. One plus five is six, but that is enough to defeat the Vanished. Whoa! The Vanished gives me 30 XP, which crosses me over to 726. And I roll on pouch table two, and I get D6 gold. Let's roll for the gold. Five gold, pouch table two uh, at minus two. So pouch table two at minus two. Pouch table, that's further up here, wasn't it? Pouch table, yeah, page 23. Pouch table two, minus two. So 2d6 minus two. That's an 11 minus two is nine. Wrapped in a piece of cloth are some Malaco leaves. Malaco leaves and some Elios petals. So I've got plus two Elios petals. Okay. All right. That was his treasure. And then also it said for the room, which is, uh, what was the room? Four, five. 
Four five was the family tomb. It says roll. So I rolled on the patrol, but there was no patrol, or there was a patrol. I get the I get the reward for that and the urn. All right, excellent. I've got one minute or just a few seconds left, and so, I'll pick right back up. Uh, my camera only records up to thirty minutes. Sorry. So uh, that's it for this episode. Um, this was a good. This was a good bit. I mean, I got a lot of rooms uh, covered in thirty minutes. Uh, I've also gotten up to 725, 726 XP, defeated quite a few monsters. These Elios petals and Malaco leaves are going to let me um, make some healing stuff. Elios and Malaco, and what was the other one? Dancoma stems. Uh, Dancoma. All right, so the Malaco can make a healing bomb. Healing bomb, yep. I can make a healing bomb with the Malaco and Elios, and... It doesn't look like I can make anything else with a Dancomas uh, right now, but all right, that is it. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me on this new episode of 2D6 Dungeon. I'll be back in another episode very soon, uh, and we'll see what happens to Jerpa when he finishes uh, exploring this level. All right, everybody, take care. Take care.